as we lift as we lift our elements before the Lord this morning, the elements that represent the body of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We just want to give God praise and glory and honor for what he has done. We thank God this morning for allowing his only begotten son to give his life for us, that we might have life and life more abundantly. We thank God this morning for the stripes that he took on his body that represent our healing. We thank God this morning because of what he has done. He came, he died, he rose again, that we might have life and life more abundantly. We give you praise, we give you glory and honor. We thank you, Father, as we lift this element before you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you transform it even now. Sanctify it, O oh God, as it represents the body of your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Father, we just give you praise, glory, and honor because everything that we should have had, you had mercy on us and you allow your son to take it all upon himself. And, oh God, we give you praise. We thank you for the healing and the broken body of Jesus Christ that gave us healing. And so, Lord, you said as often as we do this, as often as we eat this bread and we think of him, we do it in remembrance of him in Jesus' name. Break and eat. And in the same manner, we lift up the cup that represents the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we ask you to sanctify it, whatever it may be. It represents the blood of Jesus Christ, that blood, that awesome blood that made an atonement for us. Because of the blood we're engrafted in, because of the blood, our name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Because of the blood, crying out on the mercy seat, glory to God, we are not consumed in the name of Jesus Christ. But, oh God, we give you praise and we give you glory for this better covenant that you have made because of the blood. And so we just give you glory, oh God, and we thank you for it now. We ask you, Lord God, that as we drink of this and as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you and glorify you for the body and the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. This morning, man, today, just listening to the testimonies and and listening to what each person had to say, how the God protected, how he blessed, how he moved. It's just awesome. It just, I mean, I felt it to my heart. And I just thank God for each and every one of us on the line. I thank God for those that's going to see the video. And I pray that they receive something from it in Jesus' name. Amen. So um Amen. I the fast, the fast has been phenomenal. Um, seriously. I've been so creative, I've never even known that those creativity was there. Seriously. Um Doing a fast with um, fruits and vegetable is something that I'm used to. But when Dr. Mildred came with the pulse and, and all you're going to do is nuts and, and greens. And I'm like, what in the world can I fix with that? You know, you know, I'm just, it's okay to have vegetables and things, but this particular one was a little different. So I've, I've been eating lots of cabbage, <laughs> cabbage and uh, uh, carrots and just lentils, lentils. Oh my God. Lentils galore. And it's been awesome. Absolutely awesome. So much so that I will continue on thereafter. Amen. Because it's been a blessing. One of the things that we benefit from, and there's so many benefits from, from fasting, but um, there's three things definitely we can point um, out. The first thing is we lighten the heavy load on our bodies, on our minds. We hear God and we hear God clearly. And then we get self-control. 
And to today, I want to encourage us on self-control, which is one of the fruit of the spirit. And when it comes to fasting, we know that slow food enemy, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, all the names of above, he tried to come in and he tried to trick us with symptoms, symptoms of headaches, symptoms of roaring in your stomach even louder than before. And there are times when we even forget that we didn't even eat. But when, you, when a fast is called, suddenly you hear every hunger from east, west, north, and south begin to knock at your door. Can anybody attest to that? Just, just say amen. 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 <laughs> amen. 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 So a lot of times when we start fast, we get headache. And that is a clear indication that there's an influence in your environment. So the enemy comes in and he comes in to bring distraction or to influence us so we do something else. Right now, even uh, this, this morning, Sister Christine was saying she thanked God for the fast. Fasting does a tremendous work in us and it draws us closer to God when we read our word while we're fasting, when we pray while we're fasting. And what we would do during the fast is a little bit more than what we would do on a regular basis. Amen. Yeah. So, so we're talking about temperance. Self-control, that's what it means. And so we're going to go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 25. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25, and it reads, But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of his presence within us, is love, I'm reading from the Amplified, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while we're waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there are no law. And so this morning, clearly we heard from Brother Kevin, how Brother Mel and Brother Kingsley was helping him unselfishly about what it is that he needed. So I really thank God for the direction that he's taking me this morning, because I know that the confirmation that he is given clearly dictates that this is what he would have us to hear this morning. So today we're talking about self-control, temperance. And self-control is the power to influence or direct people's behavior or the course of an event. The power to influence or direct people behavior or the course of an event. Self-control also deals with are eating and drinking, gluttony, drunkenness, other things that we indulge in in access. So I believe this morning, the reason the Lord wants to bring this to our attention is we're making progress. We're moving in our season. However, some of us, need help to really step into that place where there's no turning back. There is no looking to the left or to the right, but keeping our eyes on the prize, which is Jesus Christ. So in order for us to do that, we have to get control of our behavior in terms of our eating, what we indulge in, who influences us and what course of event that takes place in our lives. So the things that we watch, 
the things that we read, that's not feeding our soul or our spiritual man. When we do these things, we open ourselves and we open doors to the enemy, unaware, sometimes consciously and unconsciously. So when we find ourselves with weak moments, we don't even have the strength to stand. And when we don't have the strength to stand, that's when the enemy comes in and he desired to really wreak havoc on us. So now that we understand that self-control is really important and um, self-control is something that we should desire during this fast, wherever we're lacking and even beyond that. But since we're speaking today of self-control, we have to allow fasting and prayer to cause us to die to self. That's what we're doing. We want self to die so that Christ can rise up in us in a great way. Mm-hmm. And not on, not on a, a moment where we are okay for a week or two or maybe even a month. And then next month, we're right back where we were before. We don't want that. We want consistency. We want commitment. And we want God to do it for us every time. Amen. So just Amen. like when we pray, we want to count on God to answer our prayer. He wants to count on us to be consistent. Amen. Yes. He wants us to be in that place where if he come like in the garden with Adam and Eve and he says, he can come in the cool of the day. But when the, in, the inconsistency came, he had to say, Adam, where art thou? We don't want that. We want to meet him where we agreed to meet. And we want to be consistent in our meeting. Amen. So Amen. let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. And it reads, Paul says, and I'm still in the Amplified, it says, I'm, I assure you, believers, by the pride which I have in you, your reunion with Christ our Lord, I die daily. I face death and die to self. And so we can't look at saying we're dying to self this week and then the fast is over on the 19th and then we right back where we started. We have to be consistent, especially when we see the progress or the hand of the Lord moving in our direction and in our lives. Amen. Amen. So if God is moving and he's doing great things during the fast and we're committed to the fast, how much more will we receive if we continue? I'm not saying that everybody had to continue after the 19th. I'm saying if we consistently make a conscious decision to allow our lives to be committed to the things of God as opposed to what self desires. Self causes us to fall short of the glory of God. Self causes us to stumble. Because self is ruled by none other that, than the enemy. Our emotions, our thoughts, our actions. We don't want that. We want God to be glorified in our temple, in our body. Why? Because when we open up our mouth to speak, and when we declare a thing to someone that doesn't even know us, they are to hear God. They ought to be able to read your epistle, your book. That's what we're a living epistle. And when they see us, they ought to see God. When they hear us, they ought to hear God. So even outside of eating, self-control based on our attitude, based on our reaction, we ought to be able to control that when we say that we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. Amen. So when somebody comes at you, and they blatantly even call you out of your name. 
our reaction ought not to be the same. If they say something that is not right, our reaction is not to come one-on-one -on -one with them. Because when we operate on the side of the enemy, we will always lose. That is his turf. He is the author of it. He is the master of it. And he knows exactly what button to press on us so that we would react the way he want us. But when we allow the Holy Spirit to take control, that's why the Bible says that in, in Galatians, when it says that be not drunk with wine in access, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. He's saying, be controlled, be led by the Holy Spirit. That's what that word fill me. Be led by the Holy Spirit. So in this season that we're walking in and, and stepping into, one, we have to learn how to be still. We have to learn how to be quiet. And we have to learn how to quiet our spirit, our soul, excuse me. We have to learn how to quiet our souls. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. And it reads, For the word of God is living and active. It's living and active, or alive and active, and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two edged sword penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit. And so in this season, we want to cut off the soul. We want to cut off wrong thinking. We want to cut off wrong emotions. We want to cut off at reacting out of character. We want to cut off the enemy. Because when we do that, when we cut or deal with the soul, then we will find that our spirit man begin to take over. So we have been taught that we're triune beings, spirit, soul, and body. So when we get saved, our spirit man, according to Ephesians 2, is quickened. We become alive. Now our soul is what we're working out. Our soul salvation with fear and trembling. Why? We have to renew our minds. We have to renew our minds daily. And that's why Paul says that he died daily. And we too ought to die daily. And how do we do that? We stay in the word. We stay in the word because the word is what washes everything out. The word washes all those things that we deal with the chaos and the confusion and and the cares of the world and life in general so looking at this season we need to come to that place of total commitment just give it all to god not thinking about how you're going to do it not thinking about when you're going to do it, but just say, God, I can't do this of myself. And there is nothing that I can come up with that even makes sense. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give it to you. I'm going to submit myself to you. I'm going to allow you to reign and rule and abide in, in me so that the glory that you desire out of my life and us as a body of Christ so that we can become one. We will speak the same language. We will have the same doctrine and we will operate in one. Do you not know that one can change the whole dynamics of what we're trying to do? One can change the whole thing. 
So for those who are, if, if there are anyone here that are struggling with, with the fast, it's, there's no condemnation. No condemnation. I am not here to say that you, um, you're guilty about anything. But what God wants us to know is that he wants us to come to that place where we buffet our flesh. Where we don't allow ourselves to be governed by the way we think. Ourselves, our flesh. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Let's go there. Romans chapter 7. Amen. Amen. And that is verse, excuse me, I said 12 is 21. I transpose my number. Verse 21, it says, this is when I mentioned earlier about the enemy, how he wants to influence. It says, so I find it to be the law of my inner self that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. For I rejoice, I joyfully delight in the law of God in my inner self with my new nature, that's your spirit man. But I see a different law and rule of action in the members of my body and is my appetite and my desire raging war against the law of my mind and subduing me and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is within my members. So that is the plan of the enemy. But God says the plan that he has for us is good and not of evil, a plan with an expected end. So when we get into a fast and we find that we are struggling, know this thing, is what is taking place, that the enemy hand is in it. So when we commit ourselves to God, God said, back up devil, my daughter says, or my son says, and the enemy have to flee because now you're going to resist him. Now you're running to the father. You're saying, God, cover me. You're saying, God, here I am. I'm struggling, but you know where I am. Help me, Lord. And so when we all come back on Wednesday, on Tuesday, I believe that's when the fast ends or, or is it Wednesday the 19th? Wednesday. Wednesday. On Wednesday, every one of us ought to be there on Wednesday because that's when the fast ends. And we all should have a testimony to declare the works of the Lord in our life during these 10 days. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have one before, I'm telling you, it is not too late. Today's Sunday. We have days. Recommit yourself in a place that God is able to do great things for you. So that when we come together, we not only have a testimony, but we will rejoice in the Lord as one to declare what he has done. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, being able to control ourselves in what we do, what we eat, what we say. And the more we read the word, the more we find ourselves where the word becomes rhema, it becomes our first love, it becomes what comes out of us before anything else. And that's how we overcome by the word of God, the blood of God, and our testimony. Amen. 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 So let's look at Proverbs 25 and 28. Proverbs 25 and 28. And it reads, like a city that is broken down without walls, Leaving it unprotected is a man who has no self-control over his spirit and set himself up for trouble. Like a city that is broken down. 
So when we just leave ourselves any kind of way, just nonchalant, that, that the enemy comes in. Sometimes he doesn't even need a crack, right? But when we just arbitrarily leave things open up to the, to the elements, he's coming. And God is giving these words and, and telling us these things. So he let us know how to protect ourselves, how we can survive during a fast, what to do when we're fasting. It's not just about eating the vegetable. It's not just about drinking the water, but God is getting ready to take us to a new level in him. Amen. Amen. A Amen. new level in him that when we speak, that thing must come to pass. Why? Yeah. Because God watch over his word to perform it. And when we allow him to do that, his word will come to pass. When we speak, when we pray, when we lift somebody up in prayer that is sick, you will see the resurrected power of God move on in their lives because you spoke. We are speaking spirits. Yes. And when we do what the word says, we will see a, a miracle take place that you will be just totally flabbergasted. Like, oh my God, I can't believe I just prayed for her and she's healed. Amen. That should, that should be the norm. Yes. And that's where God want to take us. We are supernatural beings and he want that supernatural power to begin to work in us. And if we commit ourselves, I'm telling you, if we commit ourselves, if we commit ourselves, if we commit ourselves to the things of God, the word of God, we will see great exploits. We won't have to second guess ourselves. We won't have to say, Lord, is that you? Because we will have such a covenant relationship with him that we will recognize his voice when he speaks. God wants to take us to greater heights in him. So when we say, Lord, I want more of you. Well, how do you get more of him? Because everything that we ever need, ever going to be is on the inside of us. But how do we get more of him? His word. In his presence. His word. In his presence. That means worship, prayer, praise. In his presence. But the more word we put in, the more we hear God, the more word we put in, the more we hear God. And then what comes out of us will be the word because the Bible says out of the heart comes the issue of life. Out of the heart, the mouth speak. So when we want to speak and declare a thing, that's how it happens. So we don't want to leave ourselves like this city without, without walls. Because anything goes and anything comes in. We don't want that. We want to be protected. And that's what God wants for us. Amen. Amen. So let's look at that same Proverbs, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 5, 25, verse 16. He says, have you found pleasure sweet like honey? Eat only as much as you need. Otherwise, being filled excessively, you will vomit. Don't eat more than you need to. Gluttony is a sin. Eat what is necessary. And so even after this 10 day fast, so let's say you would regularly eat your, you know, your nice meal and all that. Put one day in there. I know for myself, I used to live a fast life. And I said used to, because I haven't been doing that on a consistent basis, even for myself. So when a speaker speak a word, it's never ever just for those that are listening. It's also for the speaker. Yes. And so I used to be really small 
in, in, in body stature. Clearly, I'm not, that, I'm not that big, but I'm not where I used to be. But I purpose in my heart and I purpose in my mind that this is where I'm going from this from now on. Yeah. So am I just, am I saying I'm going to eat vegetable every day? Just that and water? No, I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying that I'm going to be conscious about what I'm eating, how much I'm eating. And I'm also going to be conscious about fasting more frequently. Because one of the things that I desire from the time I came to Christ, I gave my life to him and I read in the word how Peter was full of the Holy Ghost, that even his very shadow, the people was hoping that the shadow would, would heal them. That's my desire. When I read that, when I got saved, that's my, my shadow should heal people. Amen. Because the spirit of God is so much in me and swell up so much in me that it should take place. And so that's how we get to that place. This is not a message to make anybody feel bad by all means, because like I said, I'm, I'm first partaker of this, of this message. And every time I speak, I always tell you that the Lord has dealt with me or, or, or shown me or do something. I have a testimony lined up with my word, this word that, that, that would, the Lord would speak with the message. So God just saying, eat only as much as you need. And we will see. Some of us say that we want to lose weight. Some of us want to be in better health. We can be in better health. It's not difficult, but the, the thought patterns, the mind that the enemy will come to tell us that we can't do this and we can't do that. But it is a lie because the Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. First Peter 5 and 8. Let's go to First Peter 5 and 8. It says, and it reads, be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. So guess what? During this fast, we're praying and believing God for word of wisdom to increase in each and every one of us. Word of knowledge to increase in each and every one of us. Word, word of the gift of prophecy. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing. But most of all, discernment. Discernment. So we would make less mistake when we are able to discern what is happening in our lives, what is going on around us, when God needs for us to walk away from a situation or a crowd and get with him. We will be able to discern the presence of the Lord and also what he's saying that he needs for us to either sing, pray, or do at that particular time that he would be glorified. So we're praying during this fast for discernment. Any areas that we're weak, we're praying that God make us strong. I love Sister Christine because she always put it on the table. And anytime she does that, she put the enemy to shame. Because when he thinks that he have a secret that he can, you know, use against her and consistently whisper in her ears, she put it on the table. And when, the, when she's put it on the table, the blood of Jesus Christ cover it. Amen. And that thing will be no more. Amen. And that's what God wants. He wants us to be able to consistently acknowledge him in all our ways and he will direct our path. Glory to God. Amen. So we're going to look also Isaiah 55 and 2. And I just discovered this scripture last night. As much as I read Isaiah, sometimes the Lord don't even allow you to see something. And then when you read it again, you'd be like, wow, how come I didn't recognize that? 
Isaiah 55 and two, and it reads, why do you spend money for that which is not bread? And your earring for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, the Lord, and eat what is good. And let your soul delight in abundance. Incline your ear to listen and come to God and hear so that your soul may live. And God says, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. So God is saying, don't spend money on just stuff just because to satisfy you. Because right now, what we're trying to do is remove, remove the soul man out the way so the spirit man can live, so the spirit man can rise up, so the spirit man can mature. And the soulish realm, the soulish man can line up with the spirit man. So we're not controlled in two areas or two by two entities, just the Holy Spirit. We're led only by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we're, we want to believe God in this season or now that we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, as we say, by his word. Get in the word and we will be able to deal with our soul man in Jesus name. So mm -hmm. we just want to I, I, I'm not today is not a long message. God wants to encourage us and to give us that that way out you know for those who are struggling with the fast for those who haven't even started with the fast it is possible god wants to do great things in us and we don't want one or two people on the line to be able to say god is blessing me here and god is blessing me here and everybody should have a blessing report why because that's what god wants to do for each and every one of us we are one body one, one spirit, and we serve one God on this line and, and in the body of Christ. And so speaking to those that's on the line, that's what God wants. He wants us to be able to be one in the spirit. And when we get to that place, you will be home and one brother or sister could be sick or not feeling well. And the Lord will tell you, pray for so-and-so because you'll be able to feel what is going on. You'll be able to discern what is going on. And the Holy Spirit will tell you that uh, Sister Erica is not feeling very well, God forbid, but pray for her. Man. You understand? Yes. And that's what it means when we bring our body under subjection so that we do not allow our flesh man to rule and to reign over us. Amen. We want to commit ourselves and we want to commit ourselves all the way all the way glory to god amen 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 so before amen. we take before we take um comments i just want to pray i just want to pray for each and every one of us and then um anybody can make comments as they see fit amen so amen. father in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we thank you and praise you we bless your holy name oh god we thank you that we serve a good God, a good shepherd, one glory to God that does not leave us ignorant to the enemy devices. We thank you, Father God, for this fast that you have called. We thank you, Father, that you have even taught us this morning even how to buffet our flesh, how to bring our body under subjection, how to not allow in our flesh to rule us in the name of Jesus Christ, our emotions to be under control in the name of Jesus Christ, how we sever wrong thinking by getting into your presence, by reading your word daily in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So Father, we are grateful that you thought of us this morning and you think it not robbery to come here this morning and to let us know that you love us beyond measure, that there's nothing that we can do that will remove your love from, from, from you, your love for us. And so Father, we just give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you, oh God, that even on Wednesday, there will be much more testimonies to declare what you are doing in our lives 
And as we commit ourselves to you from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, we thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus Christ covers us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And we repent even now, God, for, for not adhering to the fast in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we appreciate you, oh God, that you love us, that you gave us an opportunity to get it right. We bless you and we praise you. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So is there any comments? Anybody have any comments at this time? I know it's uh everybody have a comment, so you know I don't want everybody to run over each other right now. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that was an excellent message, Pastor Jones. This is Dr. Jones. I oh. uh I was ex uh I was blessed by the message today. Of course, I keep hearing different versions of uh, different angles of, of that message, but I heard another version today. The Lord reminded me if I'm going to talk to somebody that operates in anger or that's in a special kind of way that situation could go very wrong, the Lord reminded me that uh, the best time to talk to them is with, when the flesh is weak during, during this fast. <laughs> Amen. Uh, told me that one time I was uh, getting ready to get into a fit of rage and he says, uh, fast. So when I fasted, I was able to talk with the other person uh, uh, with a calm spirit because the Bible says uh, uh, a soft answer turns away wrath. So uh, <laughs> when I did that, I was able to deal with the situation and my flesh didn't, didn't rise up because it was too weak to rise up. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank Amen. God for that. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Dr. Mildred? <laughs> I like um, Dr. Jones's uh, feedback because there's just no energy for the excesses. That's right. No energy. <laughs> Amen. 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 Any other person has any other comment? I do have. Amen. I do have. Pastor, thank you so much for this word today. Thank Amen. You for encouragement. It's just a boost to the journey that we are all on. I really want to thank God for using you to help us, you know, go on this journey effortlessly. So you spoke about, you know, our ability to discern, even to get better, gets better when we spend time in his presence, as in praying and receiving the word. Amen. And that's, it reminded me that, that that's one of the areas I will be praying about on the 19th. Actually, the last day of the fast, mm -hmm. on the 10th, I look at the schedule, um, the Holy Spirit will yes. discernment. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. so please, let's come and pray together. Now, based on everything you have said, this is, this is how I would like to comment. For those who did not begin the fast with us, please do not feel condemned. Yes, the fast ends on the 10th, on the 19th, which is a Wednesday, making it 10th. But we continue based on the guide, the fasting guide, we continue until the 18th, amen, February. of February. So we will continue. So if you do not begin or you started and you fell short in any way, plan to pick up again and continue. For those who are moving forward until the 18th, we will carry you through till the end, amen. amen. So between now and the 18th, that's at least a month and two days. So you have a double double chance to make it right, amen. amen. So let's, let's go on this journey. You missed the first opportunity. God is giving you two more opportunities to go on it because he truly wants everybody to be transformed as a result. It's amazing because the kings of the world know this principle, mm -hmm. but 
because we have lost our identity as children of God somewhere along the line, we do not uphold this principle. While pastor was speaking, I, I remembered Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 17. I'm going to read it. The emphasis is on the latter part. It says this, blessed is the land whose king, whose king is of noble birth and whose princes eat at a proper time. So the world system, even the princes have a time when they eat. And why do they eat? It's for strength, not for drunkenness. Amen. Amen. So the princes of this world eat for strength, not for drunkenness, not, not for gluttony, not just because they like it. They eat for strength. But just in case we forgot that we are kings, the Bible tells us in the book of um, Revelations chapter 5, uh, in verse 10, that because of the blood of Jesus, we have been made kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Amen. Amen. So your identity, my identity, is that of kings and priests. And there is a way that kings eat. They eat at a proper time, and they eat for strength. Amen. Amen. They eat right. for strength. So let's be encouraged. Yes, we will continue from the 19th. And we encourage that for those who plan to continue, stay within the food group of vegetables. This time around, incorporate the starchy vegetables like quinoa, like the yams and the sweet potatoes. Those are also within the food group, um, um, under the vegetable food group. Amen. Amen. You can do it. We can do it. Amen. My to us is that let's discipline our appetites. Kings eat at the proper time and they eat for strength. And why do, I, do we encourage that we continue? So that we are not full of what will I eat versus what wouldn't I eat. You can do without food for a while, amen, or choice food for a while, amen. Let's amen. Ourselves keep going until we, we know within us that we are committed you know, to the cause, like pastor has encouraged us. We are committed to this. We're not asking for God's commitment, yet we are not showing up to commit with him. Amen. So Amen. let's continue until we have buffeted the flesh to a place where the flesh understands the instruction. Mm -hmm. We eat at proper times. Amen. Not for drunkenness. Amen. And the flesh will submit. Yes. It will submit. And we are, we are determined to make this flesh listen to us in this yes. year. It yes. must listen to, to mm -hmm. us. And I decree that your flesh must yes. listen yes. to you in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Amen. Uh, fasting and prayer. It's not just fasting. Amen. Yes. It's fasting Amen. and prayer. That's why we do the morning dew and we emphasize on the areas of prayers. Amen. Amen. So it is fasting and prayer. Let's not be caught up with what am I not eating? Beloved, you have eaten from the day you were born till now. We can give up a few meals in the next month. Amen. 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 Mother Mildred, I have a question. Yes. Um, how about a plant-based diet? Because I know I started like I started eating plant, like plant-based diets started. I started that on I want to say Thursday. Yes, yeah, so based on plant-based diets are good. But plants mm. include fruits as well, amen. So in, but in this journey, we're doing vegetables. So you want to choose the plants, the vegetables, that, that um, the kind of plants that fall in the category of vegetables for those 10 days, for those 10 days that you choose to be on the fast, amen. amen. Okay, so no plant-based burgers. <laughs> like plant-based burgers, none of those. Uh, let's, do no. a, let's do a new plan off camera. Offline. If you don't mind, offline, amen. Okay, all right, let's go. Cool. Talk with you after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to share. Um, thank you, Pastor Jones, for awesome word of God. And I can, I guess, I can just be transparent and say, like last night, I was a little, well, a lot discouraged, and I chose to play praise music and immediately I was lifted up mm -hmm. and God started bringing verses to me like verses I've known for 
forever, but I have more understanding. Like now I just know, like no longer I, but Christ that lives in me. Let the weak say I am strong. And he even gave me Hebrews 4 and 12. The word is quick. I got excited at that point because the word is quick and it activated immediately. And um, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And I can say with the fast, it'll really pull out or expose weaknesses. But God, and um, he reminded me about Peter when Jesus was walking on water. And Peter asked Jesus, bid me to come to you. And Jesus said, come on. And he stepped out and walked on water. But he started to sink. And he cried out to Jesus. And he, Jesus immediately lifted him up. Amen. And God reminded me, like, you, I heard your yes before. You've been said yes. I was there. I'm here. And I'm where you're going. And I'm not going to have you walking on water and let you drown. I got you. And certain things I like and I asked God like how I'm gonna fix this how I'm gonna deal with this and God just let me know you're not you needed to get to the point to see you can't do it without me but I'm gonna do it destruction amen. to the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ amen 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 I think I'll just jump in here real quick yes. to say thank you very much um Pastor Jones for this uh beautiful message on self-control um, I want to just say that this self-control and in this season that we are doing the Daniel fast, we are trying to limit ourselves to the things that Daniel did. And we see the results that happened in the life of Daniel. Yeah. Um, I want to praise God for the testimony that came out of the book of Daniel, because it is in the book of Daniel that the Hebrew boys were thrown in fire. Amen. Do not consume them. Amen. So the father is bringing this testimony to us in this season, just to let us know that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's bringing it to us so that we pay attention and when you hear a testimony like that, you tell yourself, let it be done unto me as well. You desire it, you extend your hands and you go for it. Mm -hmm. She has experienced a Daniel moment yes. in the season of the Daniel fasting. So we yes. glorify God for that. Amen, and amen. Time. And Pastor Jones said one thing that, you know, just discipline yourself it's when you need to, not just because, you know, you, you've seen food or you just want to keep adding and adding to yourself. I, will ha I have a confession to make here. On Thursday morning, when I woke up and after morning dew and I was just going about my business about midday, I still hadn't tasted anything and I felt like full somehow. And now I, I just asked myself, I said, but you know, you haven't eaten, you know, and in this season, all you're eating is vegetables. Make sure you eat, you need food and so on. I talked myself into eating when I wasn't hungry. Ooh. Because I'm just trusting God that this message will help me, this message on self-control will help me to have disciplined responses to yes. all the attacks on the tricks and the gimmicks of the devil. Amen. I have Amen. to have a disciplined response such that when my stomach, I mean, when my mind tells me you have to eat, when my stomach is not even demanding, you yes. know, I will just respond. I will respond yeah. and let my, my, my body understand that without self-control, I am like a city that is broken down. Yes. Amen. Without self-control. So Amen. we have to use this time. We are encouraged by this message to use this time to be in the word, to be in the word like pastor said. You spend time in the word. 
because you are giving, you are building into the abundance out of which your mouth will speak. Amen. Spend time in the word because we want to be like Christ so that when any gimmick or attack or ad adverse uh, information comes from the devil, we will be able to say it is written. Come on. Amen. You, have it, you cannot say it is written. Yes. You don't want to be like the sons of Sceva who will say, I'm speaking in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. You know, you want to say it is written. And you only be able to say it is written because you have it in you. You yes. have said it in you. So we, we, we need to remain focused, spend time in the presence, pray. Yes. Pray, pray, worship. Now, speaking of that, the word of God tells us in Luke 18:1 that men always ought to ought pray. pray. We ought to pray. And when you wake up in the morning, make an effort before this your, your 10 days of Daniel fast runs out. Make an effort to at least participate in morning dew because we are praying together for each other. So you come, don't depend on others to pray for you. You know, in the Old Testament, yes, they had people who would go to the prophets and say, pray to your God for us. In the New Testament, Christ did not emphasize on that. Amen. When Christ died on the cross, the veil was broken. Which means that the ministry of intercession has less value and there is no ministry of intercession. It is the laziness of man mm -hmm. that has given, you know, you say, well, there will be a football match this afternoon. I want to listen to the football. Um, I want to watch the football. Let Pastor Jones be praying for me because, you know, she is an intercessor. <laughs> you know, we don't want to do that. The Lord has called all of us. Let us not say, oh, I want to go to Disney and have fun. Let's Brother Allen be praying for me because he's an intercessor. None of that. Mm -hmm. Let us all come at least one day or two. Join in the morning dew. The morning dew is going to be here for one year. But in this, I mean, in this period of fast, you want to take part in it. Amen. So that your own change will come. Mm -hmm. Your own change will come. We mm -hmm. thought that we'll have an opportunity to ask people to you know, give prayer requests during morning dew, but it's not necessary. Just come and pray. Just come and pray. It is in that place as we are all praying that people will be testifying because the presence of God is there. So it Amen. is prayer and fasting. Let this self-control of, you know, not being able to wake up that it is too early have exercise control over that. Amen. And the Lord will give you the ability when you exercise the desire. Bring yes. your desire and he will give you the ability to achieve it. Amen. 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 Any more comments on what Pastor Jones preached about? Okay, mm -hmm. if there's no more comments on what Pastor John preached about, we're just gonna um thank thank you so much, Pastor Jones, for that wonderful word that you blessed us with. We just thank God for the service of today. Thank you for the wisdom that God bestowed upon you, and we look forward to next week's service and the blessings that's gonna come with it. Just mm -hmm. gonna, we're just going to welcome Pastor Jones to give us a closing prayer so we can close the service. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you and praise you for this time that we had in your presence. We thank you, Lord God, that even as we're preparing to leave this place, but not from your presence, 
We give you praise, glory, and honor. We pray that you will continue to speak to us. We pray that the word that we heard today, we will do in Jesus' name. Amen. And we thank you that you'll be able to be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we appreciate you for who you are, Jehovah El Elyon, the God Almighty. We thank you, Lord, that it is your desire to take us from glory to glory. And so, God, we submit ourselves to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For each and every person on the line, oh God, for this week, I pray that they would hear something from you, a word from you that will bring life change into them in the name of Jesus Christ and to us. Amen. And so, Father, we give you praise and we give you glory and we bless your holy name, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, for those who have not yet made it out for the morning dew that you, we will be able to be changed change from the place of not considering the time too early and I'm not a morning person and whatever other reasons that we have, but knowing that we're coming to meet you, oh God, that would be our priority. And so Father God, we give you praise that you're going to do a new thing for us in this new season that we're walking in, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we give you praise, we give you glory and honor, we bless you for what you have done. Thank you for each person's home. We cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth above the property, under the property and around the property. And we decree and declare that no weapon that is formed against us is able to prosper. We thank you for the visionary in the name of Jesus Christ, Dr. Kwame and Dr. Mildred. We bless you for them. We ask you, Lord God, that you would strengthen them in their mortal body and the spirit of their minds. We thank you, Father God, for what you, how you're using them and what you're doing through them in the name of Jesus. And God, even as we submit ourselves, we thank you, Lord God, that each and every person will come on Wednesday decreeing and declaring what you have done for them. And so, God, we give you praise. We give you glory and honor. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh. Um, I think um, I think um, Dr. M um, Pastor Mill has um, a plan. Amen. Okay. Yeah, anybody? Today, announced that today is the Shail Woman Book Club. Men are invited, but for the women who have been attending, our meeting starts at 7 p.m. today. It will be our first meeting on the schedule for the year. Nothing overburdening today. We're just coming to acquaint ourselves and get a head start for the year. 2022 and just thought for those who join the line later and do not have the schedule i see a few people here who do not have the fasting schedule and uh, just want to pull it out here this week from the 17th to the 21 during the morning due we're praying that the holy spirit will change our position our vision our discernment our attitudes and our traditions amen, amen. so if you need any of uh, any of these things changed in your life this is a week to be part of this Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. That is it. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So can we say the grace? Yeah, and Pastor me, that's it, right? Yes, that's it. Okay. 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 Fine. Okay. Let's share the grace. So we can. Amen. We can go with that. Grace. The grace. The Lord, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We happy. Amen. Amen. God bless. God bless you all. Have a blessed week. God bless. God bless. See you guys on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.